Cardiology, one of the most sought after specialties among international medical graduates who wants to make a career in the UK. In this video, I'm going to discuss at length about how you can join cardiology training in the UK and how the whole training pathway is structured. At the same time, what gives you the competitive edge in joining cardiology training? Let's get started. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roads2k.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hi again, uh, my name is Ibrahim. I'm one of the internal medicine trainees working in the UK. So in this video, as I said, we're going to discuss about the specialty training and career in cardiology in the United Kingdom. So we just have to know first what is in the UK cardiology training. The pathway of UK cardiology training is uncoupled. So if you know by now, uncoupled means the entire training is not one single training. Rather, it's divided into two parts. The first part being core part of the training and the second part is higher specialty training. So core part of the training can be like two types, which we will discuss in, in, in the next few slides, but the, it's not a one run-on pathway system. You have to do some bit first and then apply and get into the second bit, which is the higher specialty training. And recently, according to the update of the curriculum, cardiology has been upgraded or say changed to dual CCT training program. You might be confused, like what is this dual CCT? What is CCT and all the other stuff? Keep watching, we will discuss this in detail. Just remember, once you get through cardiology training, you will not just become a cardiologist. So this entire video is made on the basis of latest cardiology curriculum. And where did I get this curriculum from? I got this curriculum from GMC website. GMC stands for General Medical Council, who regulates all the specialties and medicine related stuff in the United Kingdom. So they approve the curriculum from the societies and royal colleges and they maintain the registration process of medical practitioner and specialist in the United Kingdom. It's like one national body. So this is the latest cardiology curriculum which will come into effect. Uh, it says that August 2022, but I heard that whoever are the trainees who's joining August 2021, that means like in you know, a few days from now, will also be affected by how the training is changed uh, from the previous years. So let's talk about how do you join cardiology training. We will see from the perspective of a UK graduate and then we'll try to implement on top how an international medical graduate can join cardiology training. Obviously, the first thing first, you have to become a medical graduate. After being medical graduate, you join foundation training. For the UK graduates, you join foundation training. And after joining foundation training, you join the core level training, which is selected for cardiology. And during the core medic core level training, you have to complete your MRCP UK diploma. And after that, you apply for cardiology specialty training. So this is the pathway an UK medical graduates can go for. And they finish the training that way. But an international medical graduates not necessarily always have to go through the foundation training. And more often than not, they may not be even eligible to go for foundation training. So what happens to them? They have to gain an equivalency of foundation training, which is known as CREST form. CREST form is equivalent to foundation training. CREST stands for Certificate of Readiness to Enter Special Training. It's a form you can get signed off by the supervising consultant who can sign you off saying that you have achieved the foundation competencies that are mentioned in that form. And obviously an international medical graduate along the whole process of working in the UK, we'll have to obtain GMC registration as a medical practitioner. So you see, now there's a question as I, like you may have a question, okay, what is this foundation training and what is this crest form? It's completely out of today's video. So I urge you that you go to our YouTube channel and find this video by Dr. Ibriz 
that she explained that whether you need foundation training or not, if you don't need foundation training, then what are the other pathways you can join the medical workforce in the UK and obtain this crest form. So that's being done. The next portion is the core level training of cardiology. What are those? So core training for cardiology can be two types. So it's like a two different types of training program that runs in the UK. So the first is internal medicine training, which I am in. Uh, so internal medicine training is for three years because cardiology is a group one specialty. That's why you have to do three years of internal medicine training. Or the other core level training is called acute care common stem AM, is acute medicine. So if you go into ACCS AM, you will be also qualified to apply for cardiology specialty training. Please remember is ACCS AM because ACCS stands for acute care common stem, but it includes the specialties like anesthetics, emergency medicine. So if you do SCCS emergency medicine, you'll not be allowed to join cardiology training. You have to do SCCS AM. SCCS is four years, the last year being mainly into acute medicine. So during this whole process of achieving the core level competencies or the internal medicine training, stage one of training, you have to do workplace-based assessments and complete MRCP UK at the end of it to successfully step on to the next level of training. So the next level of training is specialty training in cardiology. As I said, this is the uncoupled, so this is separated. So after you complete internal medicine training or SSCS AM, you have to apply for cardiology training separately by a process and you'll get interviewed, your application will be scored, and that's how you will be allocated another training job. So this is almost equivalent to a fellowship elsewhere. So special training in cardiology is indicative of five years. The way that say indicative of five years in the curriculum, because for it, it says clearly that for some individuals, they can show uh, their competencies quicker than other people, or for some people that can delay the whole process because there is a delay of showing competencies. But the curriculum maker suspects that it will take five years to show the competencies that it's laid out in the curriculum. So this is from the latest curriculum that is out. You can see this is the chart that shows here which divides among the year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five, and what kind of job they will do during these years. It might look a bit confusing, but let me explain. You see the, the top, uh, I would say it's pinkish, I'm very bad at color, uh, reddish, uh, out area which says I am 2 and 35% and 25%, 10%, 10% and 20%. This is the part where the cardiology training trainees will take part in internal medicine stage 2, which is the general medicine aspect of work. They will be acting as general medical registrars during that period of year, 35% of the time, 25% of the time, and work to obtain the competencies of general internal medicine curriculum. And the rest of the portion is, see, the bluish uh, shaded portion, which is 65%, 75%, 50%, 50%, and 30%, is the general cardiology. There is no specialist theme yet in this portion. They do the general cardiology bit. And you see from third year, they start to get some specialist theme, which is 40%, 40%, and 50% in the last year. And that's where it gets decided what type of cardiologist you will become. So previously, according to the previous curriculum, if I remember correctly, it was only four years to become a cardiologist in this uh, period of time. But if you want to do interventional, there was extra one year. But this is not the case now. The specialty theme is integrated into these five years and divided amongst year three, year four, and year five. And how will you choose this specialty is depending on like, you know, how you have like decided on which specialty you want to do once you are in cardiology training. So there is no separate fellowship or separate training for each specialty. Rather, it's one cardiologist training. And once you're in, then you decide which specialty theme you want to pursue. And once you're during this training, you have to complete workplace based assessments and an exam called European exam of general cardiology. Let's talk about what are the specialty themes or what are the advanced themes that starts from year three and goes until year five. The, the themes are 
coronary disease and intervention which basically do the the cardiac intervention pci and all the stuff imaging electrophysiology and devices epn devices and then adult congenital heart disease and heart failure so as a general cardiology trainee which is the the major blue portion you'll actually do all bits and pieces of this it's not like that as a as when you are a general like you know when you are a cardiology trainee if you don't choose to do a specialty theme of intervention that you will never do an angiogram in your life no that's not the case you will do it but once you choose your specialty theme from year three you will do it even more and you'll have to do more of these things unsupervised and gain unsupervised competency that's that's actually uh, the way the curriculum is structured so doesn't mean that a year three or a year four who, who does EPN devices has never done an angiogram before. They have done it, but they have chosen EPN devices as their specialty team. So they will be doing more of that unsupervised to gain competencies in that area. So I hope it's clear how the whole uh, specialty training is structured in cardiology and how you become and how you become the cardiologist or type of cardiologist you want to be pose the real question how competitive is actually to get into internal medicine training or SCCS AM so the recruitment for both of these program doesn't run separately rather it runs kind of the similar vein but you just you just have to choose which uh, you want to go for and uh, I think the interview process and application process is intertwined for these two programs so let's look at the previous data and guess or kind of see how many posts are available and how many people actually applied for this post so in 2018 2455 people applied for a post of 1637 making the competition ratio of 1.5 in 2019 the competition ratio went up down a bit 1.43 but in 2020 you see there's a massive amount of application also not many posts so the competition was a bit higher so you see the competition is generally uh, less than two people uh, for one post so I wouldn't say it's that competitive to get into this specialty because not only cardiologists are joining these specialties because all the medicine specialty like say for gastro or whichever specialty you want to pursue in medicine which are uncoupled they can take this training all right so this is the core level training which translates to all the medical specialties now let's move on to how competitive cardiology training is so in 2018 there was 358 applications for 140 posts making it fairly competitive, almost like, you know, three person for one post. Uh, in 2019, the competition the application went higher up, the posts were low. So making it more competitive a bit than the previous year. In 2020, the applications were higher and the posts were almost about the same, making it very competitive. So one person for one post, there were four people competing. The biggest question, how to get a competitive edge in this specialty training. Over the years, we have written hundreds of guidance articles in order to guide international medical graduates in their road to UK. But at the same time, we recognize that even after reading all of this, some personal things still remains unclarified. And that is where our personal one-to-one guidance session comes into play. You can now book a one-to-one -one session with either Ibris or Ibrahim, depending on our availability, which is available on our intelligent appointment booking system. You can talk about anything related to your career in the UK from entirely your personal perspective, or you can choose to talk about a specific topic like your pathways to obtain GMC registration, or how you can apply for a job. We can have a look at your CV personally and give you tips and advice to improve your profile and at the same time give you personal specific guidelines for obtaining the training position in your desired training specialty. You can see a lot of doctors already have taken these sessions and have gotten help from us and I hope you will be one of them too. In order to book a session with us, you can choose which one of the sessions that you want to book with us and click book this session and choose the mentor and that will take you to our booking system where you can go through our availability and choose the specific date you want to choose 
and this way you can confirm and put the details to finalize the event booking. I'm going to list out this, uh, the point system, like which gives you more points in your application, thus giving you an edge over other applicants into two sides. So, so the points appearing on the left side of your screen is things that I think is fairly easy for anybody to uh, obtain. I'm not saying easy, but possible to obtain if you start thinking about it right now. And the things on the right hand side of your screen is something you should have thought about a long time ago or you can start thinking about now but I would say from my perspective those are the things it's quite difficult to achieve so let's start about the first easy thing that you can get is presentations so what are these presentations presentations is like the the topmost point for presentation is like an oral presentation in a national or international medical meeting so if you are the author of some research or if you're the author of a publication that you are allowed to give a presentation over in a national or international meeting you can actually claim the highest points for it even poster presentations are included in this category but points will be low so you can you can look a bit more about presenting either poster or in a national meeting maybe a research or a case study or anything but the overall idea of presentation will give you some points in your application then comes publications they're the same thing uh, you have to be the first author of at least two pubmed cited uh, uh, original research publication that will give you the highest point in this category but at the same time if you also are writing a chapter in a in a, in a uh, uh, like you know not self-published rather in a publicly published book in a medical book that also give you some points uh, if you write a medical book that also give you some points so publication not necessarily research publication but re anything related to academic publication will be able to give you some points in your training application now the next thing is teaching experience so teaching experience is not like that i just organized teaching and that's how it'll give you the maximum point to get the maximum point of teaching you have to organize and structure a formal teaching program and do it for at least three months or longer to get the highest amount of points so it could be that you organize the teaching program for the medical students or the intern doctors or something and you have regularly taught them for an over of three months or more and you have to have formal feedback from the people who have who you have taught that saying that you know, these are the topics that were taught and this is my feedback for them and you can find all these feedback forms from JRCPTB website to how to collect those feedback forms over the period that you will be doing this teaching program and the last thing is doing a not last last thing I think this is the second last is quality improvement project we have an extensive article uh, writing about what a quality improvement project is there are uh, in a quality improvement project there is cycle which is called PDSA cycle or similar to that plan do study act cycle so you, for for to get the maximum points you have to do two cycles of this quality improvement project so quality improvement projects you see if you do a quality improvement project and it gets published somewhere and you present it somewhere you're getting points in all the areas so, so you have to think about what you plan to do and how you want to take it up and maximize your point applications and all the other stuff. So yeah, to get a maximum point in quality improvement, you have to do at least two cycles of plan, do, study, act or whatever cycles you're doing. Uh, and you have to be involved in all aspects of it. It's not like that, oh, in quality improvement, I'll just do the data collection. Obviously, you'll not be doing a QI project by yourself. If, you, if you're a part of the team, you have to be involved in everything, like planning, data collection, analysis, uh, like, you know, making a plan to, like, you know, act and all the other stuff. So you have to be involved in all the parts of the QI project. The last thing is probably it will not be achievable for all of you but it is possible so leadership and management what does it mean by leadership and management it means that you have to hold a leadership role maybe uh, you have done some um, charity work via a, a club or something if you have if you have hold a managerial or leadership post in there for at least six or more months 
and you can show that you have made an impact. You have run some, uh, like, you know, drive or something to, like, you know, as a part of the group and you have led other people which are medically inclined. You can, you can claim points for those. You just have to get some paperwork stating that you have done those signed by the, like, you know, authorities who were supervising the whole thing and you have a leadership and management role. You can get the maximum points in this. So participation on any leadership or management kind of role gives you some points in application. Now we're moving to the the right hand side of our screen, which I think, uh, it, as I said, you should have probably thought about it a long time ago. And the the doctors who wants to join this kind of competitive training in the UK, they think about this when they are doing their medical studies. So additional undergraduate qualification or degree. So apart from your primary medical qualification, which is an undergraduate degree if you do some other things like intercalation or BSc or BA or even before doing your primary medical qualification, if you have done some of these, even non-medical degrees, which are undergraduate degrees, they can give you points for the application. Similarly, postgraduate degree and qualification, if you have done some MD by research or PhD after you have done your postgraduate, sorry, primary medical qualification, or if you have done MD, which, which was taught and had a dissertation and everything, or MSc, or anything master's related, like, you know, postgraduate degrees that you have done that can give you points to this application. So this is where any MSc or any MD you have done comes into play and helps you in your training application. All right. So the next thing is additional achievement. Uh, this is something, as I said, if you have, uh, like, you know, what the topper in your class in primary medical school or got honors or distinction or prizes for your medical uh, achievement or medical studies, you can claim points for those. So I try to uh, concisely discuss the things that gives you a competitive edge. If you want to know more about it, you can go to Google and Google for ST3 application scoring. So you'll find an ST3 recruitment website which talks at length about what can give you the points in your training application. And you can actually plan towards getting this, these things done before, like, you know, and, and, and getting this in your portfolio before you apply for cardiology specialty training. Now, what's the pay for cardiology training and specialists in the UK? So as we try, as we have discussed in several videos of ours, in our YouTube video explaining about doctors pay in the UK, doctors pay in the UK goes by a national pay scale. So it does not matter whether you're a cardiologist or gastroenterologist or a respiratory physician, all the nodal pays will be the same. And it actually depends on which place you're working, which place you're training. If they have more on calls in your rota, you'll get a bit paid a bit more. Uh, if you have less on calls, you have you'll get it less pay. But at the at the root of it, the basic pay of all the trainees in all the specialties will be the same. So for ST1 and ST2 level training, the basic pay is 39,467. And uh, for ST3 to ST5 is 50,017. And for ST3 to ST53, 53,077. And the consultant starting salary would be 82,000. And as I'm double reiterating again, this is all basic pay. As an ST1 and ST2, with 39,467 and with on calls, sometimes you can make an upwards of 58,000 pre-tax just as an ST1 or ST2 training. So imagine if an ST3 and ST5, if they do on calls, obviously the proportion will go much higher than that. So let's discuss a bit more in detail about how an IMG can enter in different pathways because the initial pathway that I showed was mainly for the people who will do the foundation training or will not do the foundation training but work towards getting a crest from sign. Now what happens if you do a MRCP and then become GMC, get GMC registration? What, what's the pathway for you? So let's just discuss from that aspect as well. So you see, you do medical graduation first and then you do full GMC registration or you get GMC registration or join a foundation training which would be the same pathway as I described before. But if you didn't, if you obtained full GMC registration, you'd not be eligible to join United Kingdom Foundation program. So our advice to start with a non-training job. So a non-training job will allow you 
to work towards getting your crest form signed. So once you get a crest form signed, you can apply for IMT or SCCS AM. And once you get into that one of those programs, you can work towards getting your MRCP exam done and then join cardiology specialty training. But if you take a, a bit different pathway, if you obtain full GMC registration with already completed MRCP, you can still join a non-training job, which we suggest you do. And while doing the non-training job, if you choose that, no, I'm going to go via IMT pathway, you can still do that. You can work towards getting your crest form signed, and then you can join your IMT or SSCS, any of the programs, and then you can join cardiology special training. You've already MRCP in the bag, so you don't have to worry about anything. A lot of people do that. They come by joining, like, you know, completing MRCP, and then they join IMT, and then they join the higher special training. It's, it's not a problem at all. But if you don't want to do that, if you want that, I don't want to go through three or four years of core level training because I have years of experience, then actually you can work towards getting your alternative core competencies signed. So like in the crest form, you're signing it for to prove foundation competencies this form is separate than crest form this is alternative core competencies which you're signing it to get the equivalency of imt or SCCS am so this form is obviously a bit more elaborate and you have to have a consultant who has experience of working in the nhs and it's all laid out in the form who can sign this form and what do you have to do to prove this form so obviously it will take a bit more effort and more work from your part to get this alternative core competencies form than to do crest form because basically a consultant is saying whatever you have done or whatever you have doing so far is equivalent to that of a uk core level training but it's not unheard of a lot of doctors get designed by proving their competent registrars and with that form you can actually directly then apply for cardiology specialty training. Now, if you have a questions regarding, I don't understand this difference between a training and a non-training job, what does it mean? Like see in IMT or SCCS AM, you are a trainee doctor. In cardiology specialty training, you are a trainee doctor, but you can also be a non-trainee doctor. This is the concept which might be new to a lot of you. And it's, it's, it's a different concept for me as well when I started um, in the UK. To understand this, we have another video explaining the difference between a training and non-training job. I suggest that please go to our YouTube channel and find this video and watch this so that you understand the difference between a training and non-training job. Now, there is another pathway, another pathway which is completely different than what I have told so far which will help you to become a specialist in cardiology. What if you are a cardiologist already in somewhere like non-UK country and you want to become a cardiologist in the UK? Do you go through back again of IMT and cardiology specialty and everything? You may not have to. So the thing is, there is a pathway called CESR route to specialism. So it's article, it previously called article 14. So certificate of eligibility of specialist registration, CESR. So you submit this specialist registration eligibility, uh, like, you know, uh, application to GMC, General Medical Council, and they have detailed guidance about what they want you to submit, evidence-wise, reference-wise, and everything. Obviously, you have to complete MRCP UK because that's the part of the whole process. You have to have, like, skills and experience suggesting like say if you want to apply for subspecialism in intervention then you have to show that this is like say 100 or 200 unsupervised intervention that I have done you have to maintain a logbook of doing that of doing all the things that like you know intervention and patients that you have seen in clinics and all the other settings you have to have, to have some papers and presentations to support your competencies in doing those things and also have some courses completed and audits and quality improvement projects also comes into play and at the same time you'll have to have structured references from already who are cardiologists in the UK. So 
CSR route is something that a lot of doctors take who are already an established specialist in other countries. They come to this country, that, that means in the UK, and they act as a senior registrar in the specialty. It's maybe work for three, four, five, six years and obtain all of those uh, uh, evidences and they submit to GMC to obtain this specialist registration pathway. So you don't have to go through a complete structured program, rather you can take your own effort of proving that you are competent enough in all the aspects of being a specialist in the UK and do that way. This is where it ends about how to become a cardiologist in the UK. If you have any questions, do ask us in the comment below or you can always check out our blog roll or other videos on the uh, YouTube channel which explains the different aspects of being a doctor in the UK, living and working here. If you have not already, please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you.